Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of Mindset Monday with Andre Martin on the Success Insight podcast. Andre is our leadership mindset and golf performance coach. She is an LPGA Class A Life member and nationally recognized top 50 golf teacher and expert a member of the Maine Golf Hall of Fame, and a neurolinguistic programming master certified coach. Recognizing golf's value as a business tool in today's competitive marketplace, Andre works with individuals, groups, and corporate or organizational clients to create educational and team-building programs that enhance the professional success of aspiring executives. Andre, good to have you back on another episode of Mindset Monday on the Success Inside podcast. Thanks, Howard. Always great to be back to talk about what is possible to improve your mindset, whether it be in sport or business. And I am thrilled for today's topic. All right. So what's on store for us today? Today's topic is the four steps you need to go from uneasy to unstoppable. I love it. Uneasy to unstoppable. It's all about being unstoppable in today's economy and all the shifts. And I am very excited about this. We all know that the path to improvement is a process, but the four keys and steps that you need are restructuring and planning, Focus, the three E's, and create a dream team. And before we get into that, I'd like to share a story. It, it hit me today as, a, as I was reviewing and really preparing for this podcast. I have a story of my own. And when I look back at it, I realized I was absolutely unstoppable. And looking at everything that's happened with COVID and just working with people in a coaching situation, even with people's mindsets tanking in their golf games, I know there's a lot of challenges out there, folks. But if you, the story I want to tell you is me starting the LA program. It was an inner city junior golf program in Los Angeles. I got an opportunity to leave corporate golf to start a program from scratch and I moved to Los Angeles from the East coast, just outside of Boston sight unseen. I didn't know a soul. I'd never even been to California before. Call me crazy. Right. That takes guts. But, but the unstoppable young 24 year old in me just wanted to start a business from scratch. I was determined to succeed. I was unstoppable. I could have been uneasy because it never been done. I was told it was like pulling a needle out of a haystack. No, I didn't even have a board of directors. I didn't know anybody. But what I did know was I was determined to make this work. I knew golf. I knew how to network. Yeah, there could have been some uneasiness about it, for, but for me, I shifted it into excitement. And I figured out how to create as many resources as possible. I was definitely unstoppable. And folks, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the detail because I could spend the whole podcast doing that. But within five years, we expanded into five states. And the gift the LPGA gave to the first tee, which many of you golfers out there know, is now a worldwide program, was the curriculum and the fact that we were able to keep it. The money went to the kids. Very little went to administration. I was really proud of doing that with all the money we raised. And yes, through the Rodney King riots, I waited to take the kids into the park, into the gang neighborhoods to the rec center and you could have heard a pin drop when I went and did it 
but I was unstoppable because I knew these kids wanted to go play golf. And I pulled into the parking lot. You wouldn't have known a bunch of turmoil and uneasiness had occurred in the, in, in Los Angeles. These kids wanted to go play. So I unstoppably drove in, took them to golf. We had a great day, lots of fun and kept going forward. And we got now this program is touching lives all over the world. And I'm very proud of that. That's my baby. And that's my story of being unstoppable. So this program, it's continuing today. Yes. And when you began the program, I remember the Rodney King days and how bad things got in in Los Angeles. And you literally drove up to a rec center did you stay at the rec center or did you put, get them all up on a bus and just take them to the golf course? I had a van okay, and I literally had to wait until it was okay for me to drive in the neighborhood okay, because it was not safe. Okay. And when I did drive in, it was really eerie because there was not even a bum in the street. None of the businesses, it was a weekend, it was a Saturday, but nobody was in the streets. It was, it was really creepy. I've never heard the city so quiet. But as soon as I pulled into that parking lot with the, at the rec center for the kids to go play golf, they all jumped up, got all excited. And it was just another day of golf. It was great. That's great. And it was my opportunity to make a difference in their lives and get them thinking about even graduating from high school. And, and considering college was even beyond that. And if we could get a handful of those kids to step it up and do that, that's what the program really did more than anything else. It, it gave them quality, character, it grew them into beautifully human beings. And and I'm just so proud of that program. Sure. Have you had an opportunity, whether planned or unexpected, to reconnect with any of the folks that supported you in in launching this event or with the kids that participated in it? Yes, I certainly have. I've, I've been back a couple of times and a couple of the kids have been very become very successful business people politicians have gone back into the neighborhoods and have helped serve their neighborhoods we've had four kids become golf professionals and actually have helped neighborhood golf courses and wow. some are out of state and they've really developed into quality human beings and it just touches my heart to think about it because if i wasn't unstoppable about this i, I wouldn't have been able to touch those lives and made a difference and it took a village. I'm sure. not taking, I would never take full credit, but it was pretty special. Sure. You know, it's interesting, though, not completely the same. Last month, I was driving back from the Grand Canyon, the first time in my 50 plus plus years. I hate telling people my age, it's just me. But I drove back from the Grand Canyon and I was driving between. Flagstaff or Williams, Arizona, up to Kingman. Mm -hmm. And the old Route 66 was a straight shot. Yes. I thought, what the heck? I'm going to go down Route 66. As I was driving, some of the massive trains that were going from the west back out east were traveling down the tracks. And, And you said something that really, it brought back a memory of this, is these trains... They were very long connected uh, trains, but there were like four or five engines in some cases. Yeah. Pulling sure. those trains. And I'm thinking this, these trains are literally unstoppable. The momentum and just the persistence of perseverance and the strength that's there to keep those trains moving. And, and I love in the story you just shared, it, it takes a strength and, up the, like you say, the planning, it takes a village to help pull this off. But once you implemented it, it was it was built for endurance and for longevity. I love it. Yes, absolutely. And so that 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 strength within, I was just so determined to build a program that would do something where it was not administrative heavy and it really made a difference in kids' lives. And so, folks, if you have a business out there and you want to become unstoppable, these are the four steps you need to do that. First, it might take restructuring or just structuring. 
and planning to make your job, your business unstoppable. So here are the pieces within that to restructure and plan for success. List all your challenges. I, I had lots of roadblocks. I, I wasn't going to say no. Nobody was going to tell me no. I just kept going. I, if I got a no, I just kept going. But I listed them out because I didn't even have contacts. I didn't have sponsors yet. I had all, the, all these things I had to put together. I actually had to have the program put together, ready for a, pros, for a press conference in eight weeks. So if you have a current business that you're just needing restructuring, what are your successes to date? Where are you now? What, what are you doing really well? What do you, where is there a need for improvement? And I, and if I can relate this back to golf terminology, challenges and successes, Tiger Woods was always decided that sand play was going to be his weakness because he just wasn't going to go there. He worked on everything else. And yes, to the common amateur, he was still extremely good out of the bunker. But he just surrounded himself with the other parts of his game to be strong so he could play well. So what do you have in your company that you do extremely well? What challenges are keeping you from continuing forward? Where do you need to improve? And now you want to take the successes that are known that can help those challenges. And finally, tap into the resources to utilize Make a list so that you could become even more unstoppable. I tapped into ethnically in the black and Hispanic gang, gang, gang neighborhoods because that's where the city of LA needed a lot of help. The Asian population was not that strong back then. I think now it would have been three different groups, but we started there. And, um, we just made a list, okay, what groups are doing great things? And um, the, the Western Gulf Association was doing a lot to help the, the, the African-American population. There was nothing for the Hispanic population. So that was really fun to just jump into the recreational center and, and, and make a difference for those kids. So what other resources? So I got the media on, bo- on board. I tapped into all the business leaders of the area said, hey, look, you want to make a difference in these neighborhoods. Here's what we got to do. And this is a program that can make that happen because we can teach kids and involve business leaders in creating leadership in a way that's never been done. The more you've, <clears throat> and so that as you correct that, you're shifting and pivoting, aren't we? So number two, the more easy you are, the more anxiety and worry creep in. So therefore, the more you focus on what you can do, you head toward unstoppable. Howard, you and I have talked about this before. You are what you think about. You are what you give attention to. So the more you focus on what you can do, utilizing these resources and successes, you head toward unstoppable. Number three is the three E's. The three E's are excitement, enthusiasm, and energy. For me to be unstoppable, I was totally excited about this program. I was enthusiastic to make a difference in the LA community. I had the energy needed to make it happen. And I and it was it became contagious. And I got everybody involved, teachers, leaders, volunteers. Everybody came together to make this happen. And in today's world, everything has happened so fast. So you've got to increase your ability to be unstoppable. And so the excitement, enthusiasm, and energy alone, just with it snowballing, as you talked about the momentum of the train, Howard, it increases your mindset. It gets you into the flow. It shifts your focus from past to present. And you really want to get excited and enthusiastic for a positive future, right? So if your focus is in the current moment and you really keep your focus honed into that it, it it only leads to a positive future 
And with that, you go over hurdles, you slay the dragon. Like I said, I didn't take no, I just kept going. And it, I was no this way, I went another way where I could find a yes. And you just, anything that comes up that is a negative, you just nip it in the bud and get back on track. You become unstoppable. Number four, create a dream team. And that's exactly what I did. Fill your team with your weaknesses. I was not a detail person. I had to learn details. So I brought in an assistant that helped me with all the detail. Believe it or not, that was back in the day when computers were just coming about. I had an itty bitty little Macintosh and we got really good at computers and getting the word out and communicating to people in so many different ways. It was just amazing. And we got positively motivated people to work for us that wanted to be there or wanted to volunteer. There was no uneasiness about, oh my gosh, you're going into the gay neighborhoods. Aren't you scared? I said, no, these people were thrilled that we were making a difference for their children. So the village all became empowered around us. Sure. Were you uneasy to get it all done? I, I just made my list. I got organized. I kept going back to number one over and over. Restructure, plan, structure, plan, go forward with full focus. And my dream team helped because we positively motivated everybody and brought in people that had a depth of resources and just kept expanding that program. Ultimately, all of us together went for the gold. We didn't settle for silver and we were unstoppable. How are you going to do that in your community today? Please let me know. How are you going to do that in your business today? In your life? In your sport? How are you going to be unstoppable? I love it. I love it. And something dawns on me after hearing the story and, and this event that has shaped your life and provides the basis for the the four steps to go from uneasy to unstoppable is I'm wondering what stories are here today what have been what stories have been created from the people that were a part of this journey this event yeah and and you and I spoke brief, briefly I believe before the the episode is, is where are they now and this might be a good segue for you to go back and invite them on the podcast to chat about how that event perhaps shaped their lives and where are they today and how could you draw create a thread that goes back or breadcrumbs, however, you, whatever metaphor you want to use to this opportunity that was made available and how that one event then perhaps shape their lives. I don't just something that it was kind of percolating as, as you were chatting about the four steps. It's pretty neat. I remember when um, Facebook's first started, we had all these people coming out of the blue that I hadn't talked to in forever. And one of my junior golfers from North Carolina reached out and shared how much of a difference I made. I didn't realize I had made an impact in this young man's life. Other than I, I knew I was helping him become better at golf he goes oh no you, you have no idea it, i i now in a great job i've got a great life and whatever you did for me in golf did it and i thank you it was really cool it was totally he f sought me out and i was just so taken aback it was pretty special yeah and perhaps it's not even to ask them what impact the event had but bring them on to hear what their journey is. And then you can kind of seed back to the event. But, you know, yeah. what we don't want to do is just pound our chest. Here, look at me. Look what I did. Yes, it has great meaning to you in your story. But it would also be very interesting to hear what they have to say. It's, it's more for them. How, yeah. how did they shift their life and yeah. stay with it and not let it be uneasy, but shift from uneasy to unstoppable sure really lead their lives in a, in a in a much more positive beautiful way because of the tools they were given and the possibilities that were opened up for them mm -hmm. so something to think about absolutely 
Thanks, Howard. My pleasure. That's what I'm here for. So, Andre, uh, before we head out, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? Certainly. They can go to my website, www.andregolf.com. I also have available, I'm in LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and I have a YouTube site. Very good. Well, we will provide, as usual, the backlinks to andregolf.com and to your social sites on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And Andre, once again, it's been a pleasure to have you on another episode of Mindset Monday on the Success Insight Podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks, Howard. All right, folks, there you have it. Another wonderful episode and really one that I think we could all use. It's all in us to 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 find the way to go from whatever uneasy in our life to go unstoppable. And today, Andre shared those four steps with us, and you'll see those in our show notes, but definitely you're going to get a lot of great value out of today's episode. As for where you can find Mindset Monday with Andre Martin on the Success Insight Podcast, you can check us out on the successinsightpodcast.com page. You can also find us on Facebook and on LinkedIn, Success Insight Podcast. And you can find us on all of the podcast directories. All you have to do is search for Success Insight Podcast. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we will see you on a future episode of Mindset Monday with Andre Martin on the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now.